always know. We always know which is the right way and which is the bad way. The bad way sometimes feels better, so we may choose that way and justify it by rationalization in order to make ourselves feel better about the bad that we did. Isn't that the way we all do things? Even if we do something wrong and we know we're doing something wrong, don't we attempt to rationalize it in our own mind and to our friends to justify what we're doing? So I believe it's a great fallacy to set out to brand those whom we disagree with as being evil people. The result of their actions we may perceive to be evil. We may perceive it to be bad. But I guarantee you those people don't see it that way. You see, nobody gets up in the morning and sets out to do evil. Nobody consciously does that. I've never met any person in my entire life who said, I'm evil, I'm going to do evil things, I like to do evil things, I want to do evil things. They don't exist, in my knowledge. And when we present ourselves to them in that light, we're good and they're evil, do you think we have a chance of getting them to listen to us? Not on your life. It's not going to happen. So I think we have to change the way we talk. We have to talk to them in a different manner. I've learned some things. And I think these things need to be passed on to you. And I think you need to start examining yourself, your agenda, your mission. Who are you? What are you about? What do you believe about America? Is it true? Are you helping to divide us more? Are you helping to bring us together? Do you really understand what this country is all about? Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, only the strong survive. And uh, I think with emphasis, <laughs> we need to uh, talk a little bit about that tonight because things are getting worse, much worse. And some people, for some reason, take issue with me when I level with you and tell you the true state of affairs without pulling any punches. Because I don't think you can survive unless you know the truth. I don't think you can even wake up unless you know the truth. I don't believe that I can accomplish anything by sitting here and stroking your egos and telling you how beautiful and wonderful you are and uh, how we've got lots of time and if we just, you know, work with politicians and things like that, everything is going to be fine. I can't do that. I can tell you that if we do all of those things, we will be responsible people exhausting every lawful and constitutional and proper and responsible method to try to restore the public republic. Nobody needs to restore the public. The public is always the blithering sheeple public. But to restore the republic and to maintain freedom, which in my estimation is the ultimate achievement of all human experience because the entire history of the world man has always been owned by somebody even kings <laughs> you say well who could possibly own a king no king was ever set upon a throne except by the power of the priesthood whatever that may have happened to be at whatever time in history that king was put upon that throne And nothing has changed today. See, Bill Clinton wouldn't be sitting on the throne of this country unless the priesthood, the power of that be behind the throne, put him there and tell him what to do. He's carrying out an agenda, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not his agenda. He's not smart enough, in case you haven't discovered that. 
So, <clears throat> I lay it on the line, I tell you the truth, whatever the truth happens to be, knowing that if you know the truth, you can prepare yourselves to deal with that truth and deal with reality, and you won't be destroyed when you discover that it really is the truth. You see, what if I stroked you along here and lied to you and tell you how wonderful you are, that you're sitting on your couch doing nothing, most of you, some of you are not doing that, some of you are very active. What if I were to tell you that everything can be solved with no problem just by writing letters to your congressman and making some calls and sending some faxes, which you should be doing, just to be responsible? And what if I told you that there was no threat or any danger from the federal government whatsoever, that this just, you know, we're just going through some rough times and some people are just politically misguided and there's some corruption in Washington. There is no big conspiracy. And uh, by exercising the power of the vote and being active in our community politics, we can turn everything around. Would I be doing you a favor? Well, I think some of you probably wish that if I did that, I would be doing you a favor, and, and you probably wish that that was the case. But the truth is, no, I would not be doing you a favor. I would be doing you a great injustice. I would be wasting my time, ladies and gentlemen, and we would most probably achieve only, only another kind of sleep. But nevertheless, sleep is sleep. Okay? And I don't want to do that to you. I want to awaken you. And to be fully awakened means that you have to be confronted with a situation that is so horrible, so reprehensible, so against everything that we have ever been taught in our lives, that it may shock you into some kind of a lethargic state of depression for a while until you learn how to deal with it, however each individual does that. But most people do. And when they do, they get angry, and then they want to do something to rectify it. And when they get busy, they come out of that depression, and then they learn how to really live. Because in your, da in your daily life, if you're not dealing with truth and reality, if you're not stepping out in front of the crowd, taking a risk, I like to call it walking on the edge of the razor blade. If you're not walking on the edge of that razor blade, folks, you're not really alive. You're not living. Chances are there's no purpose in your life. There's no direction. And I know that many of you feel that way. Many of you went through school, reared by your family, who are probably working blue-collar or white-collar Americans, searching out in their own way for the realization of the American dream. And they may or may not have, have achieved it. It doesn't matter. What matters is all your life you were told that you weren't smart enough to own the company. You had to prepare yourself to work for somebody else. Isn't that correct? And you were taught wrong. You weren't taught how to invest your money. You weren't taught how to come up, to bring yourself up from whatever position you found yourself in when you were reared by your parents who chances are achieved a better life than their parents, and they weren't really taught how to do it either. They just did it. But so many people, you see, buy into that kind of a concept. They really think that they're worthless. I mean, let's get real here. Nobody really thinks that they're worthless, but they have a very low self-esteem. They can't imagine themselves climbing any higher than where they're at most of the time. Although they'd like to, they just don't. There are so many people who are stuck in jobs, ladies and gentlemen, they've been in those jobs all their lives. Filing. File clerks. Filing papers and filing cabinets for somebody else their whole life. Do you really believe that they enjoy that kind of work? I don't think so. There may be some few of them who do, but I can't imagine it. And the pay, ladies and gentlemen, is not very good. And I could go through any number of hundreds of different kinds of jobs and uh, 
the description would be the same. Why do people stay in jobs like that? Because somehow they've been convinced by the system and by life and by their parents and by school and by school teachers and by bosses and supervisors in their own mind that they're not any better than that, that they can't be any better than that. To hope to be any better than that is to ask for disappointment. And it's just not true. It isn't true. Never was true. You see, because the man who heads the company has the same brain that the person who sweeps the floors has. He's just learned how to use it. Now, learning how to use your brain doesn't mean that you have to go to college or that you have to read 5,000 books or that you have to have an IQ of 180. No. Throughout history, there have been men and women with an IQ of 80, which is supposed to be not very good, who have achieved greatness in their lives, who have achieved a pretty good modicum of wealth, who have done great things, who have invented all because they believed that they could and they didn't listen to anyone else. They did their best, and they learned how to use their brain. An IQ, ladies and gentlemen, is a measurement, really, of how you have learned to use your brain by thinking, and an awful lot of it has to do with common sense. Common sense? What is common sense? Common sense is when you touch a stove and it's hot and the, the, the coil is blowing red and you burn your finger, common sense is when you make the connection in your brain that when you touch that stove and that coil was hot because the stove was turned on, you're going to get burned and it really hurts and you better not ever do it again. So the next time you walk in the kitchen and you see that the stove is on, you don't touch the coils. The human ability to confront the truth, realize that it's the truth, and go into the survival mode and learn to deal with that truth and overcome it if necessary and prevail is astounding. But the fact remains that human beings must know what that truth is before they can go into the mode that lets them overcome it. And there is a tendency, a great tendency, for most people to ignore the truth unless they are backed in the corner and the truth becomes threatening to them personally. Most people have the tendency to say, oh yes, I know that that's going on, but it's not going to happen to me. And whoever it happens to must deserve it. Remember that fellow, you know, three days ago they raided his home in the middle of the night and they took out all those guns and they spread them on the grass and, and, uh, and they said that he was a terrorist and they took him away. And then in the newspaper it talked about the fact that he was a member of a militia and they were going to lock this guy up forever because he was going to blow up the, the, the Empire State Building. I always knew there was something funny about him. He was always talking about the Constitution things. Nobody ever talks about those things. But it'll never happen to me. You recognize anybody there? Maybe yourself. Maybe your neighbor. You see, they have the public so brainwashed, ladies and gentlemen, that you can have an exemplary citizen. A neighbor whose home you have visited many, many times. You have seen the kinds of guns he has. A shotgun, a deer rifle, a pistol, <clears throat> maybe a twenty two rifle that he's had ever since he was a child. He may have uh, brought an AK-47 back from Vietnam or he may have purchased one simply because in Vietnam he learned that that's one of the best weapons ever made in the history of the world. 
And he may have it there for self-defense, or he may just have it as a bit of nostalgia. Who knows? Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's perfectly legal and lawful. And the right is protected by the Constitution for the United States of America. You know that thing he talks about sometimes that you've never read? And uh, all of a sudden he becomes a political threat to the status quo. And in the middle of the night they raid his home. They spread these weapons out on his grass. They have a picture of these weapons in the newspaper the next day. On the 6 o'clock news, the anchor talks about Joe's house was raided, and it was found that Joe had been planning to blow up the Empire State Building, and he had automatic weapons. Now, you're sitting there. You know this is a lie, but you don't say a word, do you? No, you don't. Nobody has. And nobody will, and even if you did, nobody would report it on the news or in the newspapers. How do I know all this, ladies and gentlemen? Because it's happening all across the country. All across this country it's happening. It happened in Waco, Texas.